Yesterday we focused on exponential equations, so exponents on both sides, exponents on one side. Today we're going to focus on logarithmic equations, and we're going to do the same thing. Logs on both sides, and then logs on one side. Logs on both sides is definitely going to be the easier one. If we've got log base 4 of 3 equals log base 4 of 2x plus 5, because the log base 4s are the same, the stuff inside the logs must also be the same. So on this one, I would subtract 5 on both sides and divide by 2 to get negative 1 equals x. The biggest difference today is that it says in the directions, check for extraneous solutions. And if you notice number 9 on worksheet 5, if you have a negative number inside a logarithm, it doesn't work. You can't do a log of a negative number. So since these are logarithmic equations, if our answer were to create a negative inside a logarithm, then even though it appears to be the correct answer, it wouldn't actually work in the problem. It would be an extraneous solution. So on the left side, we don't have to worry because 3 can't be anything but 3. On the right side, think about if you plugged that negative 1 in right here. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 5 is not negative. So we're good. We're fine. Okay, the next one, they're going to get a little sneaky on us. Ln of stuff equals ln of stuff. So x squared minus 4x has to equal 12. Do you see how they're getting sneaky on us? We have x squared and x. How do we solve equations when we have x squared and x. We have to factor. We need to get one side equal to 0, and we need to factor and solve. And there is going to be some factoring and solving in this section. Remember when we're factoring, we are looking for two numbers that multiply to give us the last number. Those same numbers need to add up to the middle number. So, 1 times 12, no. 2 times 6, 2 and negative 6. So our factored form is x plus 2, x minus 6. So you put those numbers exactly as they are in the factored form. Then to solve them, if x plus 2 had to equal 0, our solution would be negative 2, because negative 2 plus 2 is 0. If x minus 6 has to equal 0, our solution is positive 6. This especially is where you need to check your solutions to make sure that neither of these create a negative in the log. You don't have to worry about the right side. That's ln of 12. That's not going to change. But if I do negative 2 squared, that'd be positive 4. Negative 4 times negative 2, that'd be a positive, a positive and a positive, that we're good. So this answer is good. And I'm assuming positive 6 is going to be fine. 6 squared is 36. 4 times 6 is 24. 36 minus 24 is still going to be positive, so that answer is good. So you don't even have to fully solve out. You don't have to, like, fully check your answer, but at least plug it in and make sure that you're still going to have a positive number. And if you need to grab your calculator and do 6 squared minus 4 times 6 just to make sure, that is totally fine. Okay, so if there's logs on both sides, set them equal to each other, you're good. What if there's only a log on one side? And it does say here, make sure you isolate the log first. Both of these are already isolated. Um, it'd be like, check out number 15 on the next page. You don't have to flip. Just look up here. 
you'd have to subtract 7 on both sides and then divide both sides by 2. Then you could do the next step. So always make sure that the log has been isolated first. Then you're going to change forms, just like we did yesterday. Start at the base and woo! Now we're starting in log form, so we want to write our new version in exponential form. So 2 raised to the negative 1 equals x. And this is actually easier than yesterday because you don't have to evaluate a log. You just do 2 raised to the negative 1. It gives us the answer 0.5 or 1 half. If I put that 0.5 inside this log, we would have the log base 2 of positive 0.5, which is totally fine, so that answer is good. Okay, often I have students struggle with ln questions, but if you remember, ln is the same as log base e. So it's often helpful to rewrite this, log base e of x plus 22 equals 3. Or even if you just put a little e underneath that ln just to remind you that there is a base e here. Then we do the log ride. Woo! e to the third equals x plus 22. E is above your ln button, so we would do second ln button to get E on our calculator, and then the 3. I get 20.086. The E on your calculator is right above your ln button, so second ln button, and then type in the 3. And then to finish solving this, we subtract 22 on both sides. Negative 1.914 equals x. And I would take a moment. Negative 1.9 is pretty close to negative 2, right? Negative 2 plus 22 that's still going to be positive, so we're fine. That answer is fine. Number 15 is our first example where the log is not isolated. You want to get this ln of negative x by itself. So first we're going to subtract 7 on both sides. Oof. Then we're going to divide by 2. And I know that my answer is going to be a decimal, so I'm going to go ahead and write 7 halves as the decimal 3.5. What base is ln? E. So you can either rewrite it log base E, or you can just stick a little E in there. So when we do the log ride, woo! E raised to the 3.5 is going to equal negative x. So in my calculator, e raised to the 3.5. And then I'd have to divide by negative 1. So x actually equals negative 33.115. Okay, here's the kicker. We have to check to make sure that this doesn't create a negative inside the log. It says ln of negative x. So if you put negative 33.115 in there, you'd have negative negative 33.115, which would end up being positive, so it is fine. That negative that's already in there basically is telling you that having a negative solution is okay because negative negative makes positive. Okay, do we need to do number 16? 
Pause the video, try 16 on your own. Here's number 16 worked out. Pause the video to look this over and let me know if you have any questions about it. When you have two logs in an equation that are on the same side, we want to use the properties that we learned to condense the logs. So remember condensing, if it's addition in between the logs, that is the same as multiplication inside the logs. So the x and the x minus 2 are going to be multiplied together inside the same log. Now this log is isolated, so we can change forms. So, woo! 2 to the third equals x times x minus 2. Okay, 2 to the third, I can do that in my calculator. 2 to the third is 8. And then I'll distribute to get x squared minus 2x. Anytime you have x squared and x in the same equation, you need to get one side equal to 0, and then factor and solve. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to give us negative 8 and add up to negative 2. So my factored form is x plus 2, x minus 4, which means our solutions are negative 2 and positive 4. The checking is, ex is especially important here, particularly this first log in the original problem. If I put negative 2 in there, we've got log base 2 of negative 2. We can't do a log of a negative number, so that answer is crossed out. Check 4. 4 works in the first one. 4 minus 2, is that positive? Yes, so x equals 4 works. We are not going to do number 18 because it involves quadratic formula and we're just not going there. We're going to stick with factoring. So your first step is to condense the log. Remember that plus in between the logs is multiplication inside the logs. So the x and the x minus 2 go into that same logarithm. Our next step is to change forms. Don't forget to change forms using that base. So 2 to the third equals that stuff that's inside the logs. Then I just multiplied it out and get 0 on one side so that we can factor, solve, and check your solutions. You check them back in the original problem to see if either of those solutions create a negative number inside a logarithm. So those two things that I highlighted purple, they have to be positive when you plug the solutions back in. If they aren't positive, cross that solution off.